when I think about the Arizona State Museum Library and Archives, it it's, holds a unique position on campus. It was the very first independent library created on campus. And this was through the great persuasion of Dr. Emil Howry uh, with the current president of the University at the time, Dr. Harville, and because of a bequest from Reverend Victor Stoner, who in his will um, gifted to the museum a hundred, or excuse me, probably 1,200 volumes from his personal library for the express purposes of establishing a museum library. And um, so we hold that position still. We're still a an independent library on campus and from that 1200 volumes we now have a hundred thousand volumes that's just in the library which was established in 1957 and then the archive uh, which has been recombined with the library uh, holds somewhere the beginning with some a few filing cabinets and now we have something like 50 manuscript series coming close to 3,000 linear feet of documents. Um, so it's pretty phenomenal. The collections are unsurpassed for anything having to do with the uh, archaeology and anthropology of the Southwest and Northern Mexico. That collection has grown through donations and gifts. And so just the library, we have Emil Howry's collection, we have Claire Lee Tanner's collection, we have Raymond Thompson's collection, um, we have many, many things from Richard and Natalie Woodbury. Um, it's, it's really, that's just the library collection. When you get into the archives, those same figures are prominently uh, represented in our manuscript collection, as well as Edward and Rosamund Spicer, um, Oh my gosh, we just got Priscilla Bors, a uh, major Southwestern ethnobotanist collection. Um, it's, it is a who's who's. I mean, if, if you are looking for like the establishment of Southwest archeology span as a discipline, if you're looking for major excavations and the, the work that created chronologies, created strategies and methodologies in the Southwest, it's, we've got it. It's online now, the catalog is online, and our catalog encompasses all documentary collections here at the museum. And so from day one, we've been available and open to the public, and we still are. And I think that's a really important point of something that we have contributed to our community uh, here locally as well as nationally and beyond. But when I think about the national impact of our collections in this program, I have to really, the thing that came to my mind first is, how these wonderful materials have been used. The fact that uh, just alone, just in the 30 years that I've been here, we have trained over 75 librarians and archivists who have gone on to hold important positions in the state archives in Arizona, New Mexico, at, at universities like the University of Col uh, Arizona as well as California, various museums. So we've really invested in the profession. So that's one impact. The other impact is through the many decades of ASM library and archive use, think about the number of students who have used the collections to create their dissertations, their master's thesis, they've gone on to create great careers and companies, I mean, including our directors, Dr. Grindel and Dr. Lyons, have used the collections as they went through their programs. So I think that was another huge impact that perhaps is a little more quiet. Um, the other one, of course, is that these collections and these, the, the library and archive program has really made possible um, the work and the creative activities that happen in the museum. When you think about the research that's being done, the publications that are being written, the uh, public programs being created, the exhibits being created, documentations of the collections, everyone uses library and archives including all of our mandated responsibilities because we hold those documents forever. They ultimately reside with us in the archives. So I think um, the library and archive um, is sort of like this, I, I often refer to it to students as the hidden gem on campus. It's also one of the foundational programs of the museum, but it's not flashy. <laughs> we don't have exhibit openings, we don't create publications. We are quietly there supporting everyone's work. And I think that um, this, is, this is what museum libraries and archives do, and this is what the uh, ASM Library and Archive has done for many, many decades now. We just quietly and persistently do our work and support our colleagues and the programs at the museum. And I think all of that together 
um, has really had impact beyond the museum walls. It has reached out into tribal communities, it has reached out through students, through um, professional development, through the, the uh, organization of new companies. Um, I, think, I think we've done a good job. <laughs>